Hi everyone, Robert here with Mod Science, Facebook.com, Mod Science, or ModScience.net. You guys should have it memorized by now. But anyway, uh, today I am going to be doing an installation, and by tonight, today I mean tonight. It's late as hell at night, but um, today I'm going to be doing an installation of the Gigabyte, or excuse me, the EK Waterblocks GAAX370 Gaming Monoblock. This guy right here. Um, which I had a previous unboxing video that I just completed on to uh, the Gigabyte Aorus Gaming K7 motherboard which you see in front of me. Now what you'll notice is that I currently have EK's uh, Supremacy Evo uh, water block installed right now which I will be removing and then installing and replacing with this guy right here. So you'll notice the difference in size. So. This one measures maybe four inches or so. This guy's probably more about six inches and uh, will take up more real estate on the motherboard itself. So this will be removed, this will be removed, this will obviously be removed as well. This will remain here too. Uh, I'm not going to do like a live step by step footage, uh, video as much as I would like to. I don't have the setup for it, nor do I, nor do I have the time right now. Um, so, what I'm going to do is kind of show you in phases what I'm doing. So, I'll start, of course, by um, on installing this, removing the back plate off the back, installing the monoblock, uh, and then of course, and then uh, and then using the um, the screws and all that kind of stuff to uh, install the rest. So the tools you'll need pretty much are the tools I'll be using. Of course, are going to be the monoblock itself, the instruction manual, the bracket and the gasket itself, and then the thermal pads for the VRMs, which run up and down there, and then. The Allen wrench, which is included, I don't know exactly what the um, um, thickness of it is, uh, but it's one of the thinner ones. And then there's also EK's Ectotherm, which I probably won't be using. Instead, what I'll be using is some of Arctic Silver's, um, let me see here, uh, Arctic Alumina, which I like quite a bit and I've used uh, a lot as well. Either one is fine. I mean, the EK product is actually pretty good too. Um, I don't know, I may actually use that one, it just depends on how I feel. So like I said, I'll just take this uh, in pieces, so um, I'll, I'll disassemble part of it uh, and then kind of show you that and then reinstall install the next piece until we get through the entire thing. So sit back and enjoy and be sure to subscribe and like the video of course. Okay, so what I've done here is I've removed the monoblock from the CPU itself, removed this, the mounting screws and I won't be taking the CPU out of the socket. I will need to clean it with some um, some isopropyl alcohol. I usually use the 99% um, um, isopropyl alcohol just to make sure it's thoroughly cleaned. And then after that, I'll flip the board over and remove the back plate, which I'll show you in a bit what that looks like, and then proceed from there. Okay, so I've removed the default back plate. This is technically the, the, uh, the Evo uh, back plate. Although the, um, the original backplate looks very similar to the K7, I think it's a, like a black one. Um, what I did because I faced issues with booting was I took the original adhesive pad that came on the back of the K7 and stuck it on to, this Evo, uh, to the Evo backplate, which worked just fine, right? Um, a lot of the issues that people have had with getting boots, uh, getting the pewter to their machines to boot, Due to the due to the issues with the monoblock, uh, due to the the gaskets are pretty much resolved now, and I think I said in the other video that their uh, EK's new gasket is much thinner. I don't know what material it is, but I will be using this and installing into the back of it here. All right, now with the back plate removed, I flipped over the motherboard itself. What I need to do is remove the MOSFET coolers, which are these bad boys right here. Okay. So I flip over the motherboard itself, and there will be a total of one, two, three, four, five screws that need to be removed there. You can see those, all of which come are, are going to be easily removed with a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, so I've since removed the screws from the back of these, so I simply would just slide the MOSFET cooler off. You'll notice that there's also kind of a thermal pad that already exists there. And there you'll see the VRMs or MOSFETs, those four little pieces right there, what we're gonna be covering up there too. And then we also remove it from here. At least uh, I think we, yeah, there we go. 
You do have to loosen up the screw that's in the back here. It's actually listed in the instruction manual. But you do have to loosen up this screw that holds up the top of that Oris um, rear panel cover just to be able to lift this bad boy up, at least I think. Kind of difficult to do this with one hand, but I'll be able to manage here in a second. So it's coming off just fine. Watch me snap it. Um, got some of the CPU goop in my hand there. But yeah, so it's also got a thermal pad of its own, which will be replaced with a, uh, a different thermal pad that is provided to us by EK. Set those aside there. And yeah, there looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six of those bad boys there. And then we've got about four running across the top. So what you do is you take these thermal pads and you have to size them to whatever these, whatever the size of the original um, thermal pads would be. That's what I'm probably gonna do. And then it's, it's adhesive on both sides. So you would simply lay the pieces across there on top. And then after that, I will um, wipe off the CPU goop, uh, unbag the monoblock again, and install it here in just a bit. So we'll continue on going uh, from here. All right, so I've installed the thermal pads uh, onto the MOSFETs right above and to the left of the CPU itself. So the pads are a little bit bigger. The, the pads that come with the kit are a little bit bigger than they really, they, they actually give you more than you need. Um, there's a little bit left over right over there, but all you really need to do is just make sure that you cover the MOSFETs that exist, and they're very small, so you really don't need too much. It's probably like a two inch piece it's probably like a three inch piece right there, maybe less than a, a centimeter uh, in width. Uh, just make sure that it covers you know, all the different MOSFETs. And then also it's important that you make sure that you remove the film that comes on both sides of the, uh, the thermal paste itself, right? One's a lighter blue, the other one's a clear. Um, you, you, you wanna absolutely make sure that you take those off. Kinda get them securely on there. Uh, I went ahead and cleaned all the other prior um, thermal compound off of the CPU itself. I put some more on. I'm actually just going to go ahead and use the um, ectotherm that EK provided with the kit just to, just to be sure. Probably put on a little bit too much. Typically about two grains of rice is good, but that should be fine. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll take the monoblock itself here, and I'm going to clean off uh, some of my thumbprints that I've uh, had there and then uh, I'll drop it to, I'll, I'll lower it down onto the unit itself. Now before you do this there are some self-adhesive um, washers that come inside of this kit that you have to make sure that you stick onto uh, the different portions of it prior to actually uh, lowering it down onto the holes itself. So I'll do that now and then I'll post the results here in just a second. 